That was a scene from The Nutcracker, the holiday classic that's been performed by the New York City Ballet for more than 50 years. But this year, the timeless production actually features something new. Elaine Quijano is here with the story. Elaine, good morning. Good morning. 11-year-old Charlotte Nevres is the first black dancer to win the coveted role of Marie, the young heroine of the Nutcracker story. And her story is just one example of the changing face of the world of classical dance. Each year, students from the famed School of American Ballet star in this annual presentation of The Nutcracker. The school was founded by world-renowned choreographer George Balanchine in 1934 as a place to nurture young talent who could then move on to the elite stage of the New York City Ballet. But for dancers of color, getting there often meant encountering invisible barriers. When you are a minority um, in any environment, there's an added struggle. Aisha Ash attended the school in the 1990s and performed with the New York City Ballet for more than seven years. She says it was sometimes the small things, like not having proper hair products or stage makeup, that sent a message about whether she truly belonged. I remember the girls I got in with, you know, were given many different palettes and things to choose from. And, you know, I sort of got a lipstick and that was pretty much it, and maybe a powder. It was like, I don't really have much for you. They didn't have anything with your skin tone. With my skin tone. These things, they're not said maliciously. You know, it's just, that just was the art. But you just sort of feel yourself drifting more and more weight and feeling more and more separate than everyone else. Think about your shoulders and lift. Ash now sits on the diversity committee at the School of American Ballet, and her experiences have helped pave the way for this moment. 11-year-old Charlotte Nebris, whose grandparents hail from Trinidad in the Philippines, soaring on center stage at Lincoln Center, the first black ballerina ever to play the lead role here in The Nutcracker. Since 1954, there's never been a Marie that looks like you. What do you think about that? Well, at first when I found that out, it was a little bit surprising, but then it sunk in that well, if I'm going to be doing this role and I'm the first person, then I want to make it count. So I really wanted to make it special for everyone in the audience and for the people on stage as well. Almost done. Charlotte's mother, Danielle, was born and raised in New York City and says it wasn't long ago when this kind of opportunity wouldn't have been possible for her daughter. It's sort of magical for me um, to see that sort of um, just hopefulness and just realizing that there is no limit. So I'm sort of learning through her that maybe the way things were aren't what they are any longer. Now, dancers are given makeup and hair products to enhance their features, not alter them. One thing that they made clear to us is that she didn't have to change her hair. Now that she has this big role as Marie, they, they don't want to change her. They want her as she is. And for, you know, women of color, for black women, that's, that's very important to know that you are enough and you're beautiful as you are and you don't need to change who you are. Plie one. Sending that message is now a priority for the school. We wanted to open up communication face to face between the artistic staff and the dancers to hear their concerns. Former dancer Jonathan Stafford took over as artistic director earlier this year after ballet master-in-chief Peter Martins retired amidst abuse allegations. Stafford intends to change the culture, including making casting decisions that better reflect the city's population. What would you say to folks who wonder, why has it taken so long? Well, they're absolutely right. It has taken too long. Unfortunately, the country we live in, um, there's been policies and practices that have been codified from a very, very early times and then strengthened over the years that don't allow equal opportunity for every person. And ballet was um, very much a European art form when it came over to this country. It was based on standards of beauty that were very European and very white. And it just took the dance world in New York City ballet a long time to first recognize it and then to change it. That also means shaping audience perceptions, something Aisha Ash is trying to do off stage in her Swan Dreams project. It's an ongoing photo essay that includes striking images of her in her hometown of Rochester, New York. While we're trying to create more black ballerinas 
we also have to change the, the perception that those who are coming to the ballet have of women of color. We are multi-dimensional and we are also soft and graceful and angelic and ethereal and society needs to see us in that way so that when they come to the ballet and they see that black or brown princess on the stage, it's, well, of course. Sue Tanu. A mission the School of American Ballet shares. We are in a position to tell people what is beautiful and we can change people's idea of what is beautiful by what we put on the stage. And that's a responsibility that we take very, very seriously. And by putting some dancers on the stage that our longtime audience goers maybe hadn't seen before, it's gonna change people's perception of what ballet is, what a ballet dancer is. For Aisha Ash, it's a full circle moment. It's so nice to meet you, sweetheart. I think less about what it means to me, and I think much more about what it's going to mean to all of those little girls that see her, white and black, that see her and can see themselves and see a chance, see an opportunity. That's huge. What is it that you hope people watching in the audience feel or think about when they see you performing on stage? Well, I want them to feel empowered because you get to see someone like you on stage and it makes you think, oh, well, I, maybe I can do that too, because if she did it, then I can. <laughs> in addition to Charlotte, the other three children who play leads in this year's Nutcracker are also multiracial. Jonathan Stafford, the artistic director, says because the available pool of talent is now bigger, those who dance in lead roles truly represent the best in the ballet world today. Yes, Hebe has really done a great job of bringing diversity into the forefront, but I understand Charlie got another little surprise <laughs> visit. She did from her other mentor, Misty Copeland, so this was so fun to watch. Uh, she was appointed principal dancer, Misty Copeland was, at another company, the American Ballet Theater, and she was actually in the audience at a recent wow. Nutcracker performance. Charlotte was transfixed the very first time that she saw Misty perform, so this was another full circle moment. Misty congratulated Charlotte on her accomplishment. Oh, it's what Charlotte said at the end there. When you see somebody, we say this so many times, when you see somebody who looks like you doing something, suddenly your mind is open yeah. to that possibility. Absolutely, and for audiences too, it's yeah. just as important to see a diversity of people on that stage. Such a great Thank story. you, Elaine. You're welcome. Thank you. Good to have you.